Welcome guys, Matmus here with you today. Thank you for joining me today. I do really appreciate it. So tank camouflage, a really interesting topic which I've been putting off for a little while, but I recently found some information and sort of, you know, a tidbit that kind of got my motivation going to talk about this a little bit more. So as you're all well aware, we have a lot of armored battle groups from most NATO countries training within Poland and other European countries right now in the unlikely and kind of scary event of some sort of flashpoint or conflict appearing in the near future. Now, I'm not going to talk politics because I don't do politics. I fucking hate politics. Um, but what I do want to talk about is how these armored battle groups are training in these certain training areas and how they're kind of sharing techniques. Now, as you can see, the beautiful Abrams here is rolling around in the gorgeous snowy Poland area, training areas here. And it brought me up to the attention of why are these tanks still in their khaki tan, coyote tan colors? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory, guys. Basically, the United States military have deployed armored battle groups all over the world, and it costs a lot of money to repaint these vehicles up. It really does. It's not cheap, it's not easy. And as you can see here, the Americans have decided to start utilizing old school camouflage, and this is really cool to see. Now, the Germans and other Western uh, European countries have always really implemented certain kinds of primitive camouflage, whether it be to sticks and twigs on bushes, and I always used to love seeing the Germans rolling around in their Leopard 2s, literally a giant gigantic 62 ton bush they would camouflage them to perfection they would put so much effort into making those tanks literally look broken up camouflaged as possible and i loved it and i'm really interested to see that nato forces from other countries are starting to implement the same sort of tactics and you're wondering well why are they doing that matimus we have all these modern technologies that can see these vehicles from miles away whether it be thermal imaging aircraft drones and such now this is all very apparent and very obvious, however guys, you've got to remember that if they're wanting to try and make it as difficult as possible for the human naked eye, they're going to do so. Vehicles and the specialized technology isn't always available to potential enemy forces and they're going to capitalize on that as much as possible. As you can see, these gentlemen here are camouflaging their Bradley up very, very nicely. Um, and it's not a simple process guys, it takes a lot of time, it has its pros and its cons. Let's talk a little bit about its pros. Obviously it breaks up the natural shape of the vehicle and that's going to be really nice to have when having an armoured battle group in say a defensive position alongside wood lines, crests of hills and such. Really you shouldn't be putting vehicles on crests of hills but it is a good dig in position potentially and if you can break up that vehicle with natural foliage then that's a great way. As you can see this Bradley has done very well and this crew has done very well with this Bradley. However it comes with its own inherent problems too. As you can see the sighting system and the weapon systems are covered with bushes and branches and also the commander and the gunner if they need to look out the top of the cupola cannot see as well as if they were to have a completely uncovered vehicle as you can see it's not going to be as simple also to be able to get in and out of the vehicle because you're going to get covered in fucking sticks and branches and all sorts i found it really interesting actually when they camouflage this bradley up and there's going to be a gentleman talking about it in a little while they actually used a tree to uh, camouflage the radio antenna which is really cool so as you can see, these Abrams are rolling around in the beautiful snowy training area of Poland and as I mentioned before, most of the American Abrams are actually camouflage schemed or paint schemed in the khaki type coyote tan color. Now that's primarily for the reason that the United States, as I said before, have deployed vehicles all over the world and most of the training areas in the United States are in desert conditions. For instance, 29 Palms where the US uh, tanks roll around and do all their open ground training and such. There's no requirement for there to be green. This, you know, tan color works very, very nicely. But now they're being redeployed to Poland, it brings in its own inherent difficulties. And it seems as though the Germans have definitely took along their role of helping these guys get their tanks at least somewhat camouflaged. And that's really interesting to see because we're going back to the old school days, guys. We're going back to World War II tactics, making sure our tanks are broken up. Let's just look at this Abrams rolling up here, right here. From a distance, really, it would be quite difficult to tell what kind of tank that is. Yes, you'd see the Coyote Tan color a little bit, and yeah, you'd probably designate it if you were an enemy force as an Abrams, due to the fact most of the Abrams are of that color. But in the grand scheme of things, its actual outline and shape looked a lot to me like a Leopard 2, it could have been a C1 Ariette, could have been just about anything. Um, and that's really cool to, to kind of see that they're actually trying to go back to the old school primitive techniques. Now there's multiple variations of camouflage other than just using foliage and sticks and twigs. There's also radar breaking up netting, which is really cool. I did a bit of research on this netting and basically it can be thrown over the vehicle and it has a certain signature on the, on the netting itself or a certain coating that can actually kind of 
in some ways deflect radar signature. I don't know technically how it works, and I'm sure in some respects it's classified, but it was really cool to see, and it looks like this tank's utilized what seems to be the standardized camouflage netting, which was, oh my god, a fucking pain in the ass to work with back when I was in the British Army using on the Warriors. It got caught on everything, whether it be buttons on your jacket, your fucking helmet, cupola hatches, buttons, knobs, switches, clamps, bloody everything. It was a nightmare. However, it was very, very handy of being able to cover for aerial cover. And this is the key point I want to make here. Yes, guys, we know fine well that aerial drones and such have imaging systems that can easily detect these vehicles from the sky. The Abrams, for example, is a prime example of a lot of heat being produced. It's a gas turbine engine, and I work with turbine engines from a day-to-day -day basis, and I know much heat they produce. It's a lot of heat. However, most battle groups in this kind of situation, if they're in a defensive role, because let's be honest, and again, not going into politics, these vehicles are primarily going to be placed into a defensive location, trying to create some sort of standoff for a potential enemy force, not mentioning any names, rolling in with huge armored battle groups. So with a unit like this that wants to hold a defensive ground, there's no real requirement for them to be engines running ready to burn off and fly away. Most of the tanks will actually be utilizing what's called their APU, which is their auxiliary power unit. That unit is allowing the tank to have still enough power to generate for computing systems, ballistics computer, firing systems, and obviously radio communications within the crew and to other units. That's very key, guys, because that engine produces very little heat signature. And even when it does produce heat signature, it's quite easily dissipated. It can't really be detected from, say, 20 to 30,000 feet as well as a huge 12-cylinder diesel engine or a massive Abrams gas turbine engine. With that being said, the whole thermal imaging system thing isn't really that applicable in that kind of regard. Now, I don't know how accurate that kind of system is with the, uh, you know, aerial photography and such and reconnaissance, but I can tell you this, that's why that engine was produced, and I know it doesn't produce that much heat, it's quite quiet. Again, having 12 or 3 or 4 battle groups of armored fighting vehicles parked up in a woodline, all engines running, that's not a good thing. That can be heard from a long way away, and especially with the beautiful Challenger 2 with big old twin turbo engines. You can hear that thing from a fucking mile away. Um, with the APUs, you have what's called silent watch, and that is a form of camouflage, audio camouflage. And to have audio camouflage is very important. Infantry love to hunt for tanks by its sound. You can hear an armored column rolling from a mile away, and they're just going to set up an ambush knowing that where the tracks are coming, and they're going to watch you come in or listen to you come in and blast you. The exact same thing happens for a standoff position. You have to be able to have some sort of audio camouflage. The APU is able to do that. Other forms of camouflage get a little bit more technical, and as you are probably well aware, there's a lot of systems now being developed to try and actually produce see-through slash invisible camouflage for arming fighting vehicles. Yes, I'm not kidding guys, there's actually technology right now that is allowing the vehicle to actually utilize the background cover that is driving along or being backdropped against and displaying it on a specific type of screen system that when an enemy targeting system or sighting system is looking at it, it looks as if the background is the tank. That is some cool shit and really impressive and I'm really curious to how far that's actually going to come in. Now again, that kind of system has its own kind of technicalities and I've been thinking a lot about it lately and before doing this video is, what on earth are they going to do with that kind of system if it gets muddy, okay, if it rains? You've got to think, if they're projecting something onto a screen and it's being portrayed as something that's in front of it, if you're driving across muddy terrain, which tanks inherently do, what happens if there's a big splurge of mud along the side of your beautifully crisp, clean screens that are supposed to be projecting the backdrop image? It's going to show speckles of mud all over it and look like a moving, I don't know, elephant shit sprayed screen of something. We're not too sure what, I'd just shoot it anyway. So that's kind of interesting to see. I'd wonder how they kind of get around that kind of task. It'd be, would be an interesting sort of principle they'd have to look at for sure. Maybe, I don't know, a coating that allows mud to just slide right off, who knows? Um, another thing with thermal imaging, guys, is there is actually a particular kind of system that can be based onto armored fighting vehicles called the Barracuda camouflage system. It's also a heat preserving system, which basically means that when you put this netting and padding all over the vehicle, and there's a lot of Leopard 2s that I've seen in Afghanistan that have used them uh, 
It's really cool looking stuff. It's kind of like a scrim netting slash padding that actually allows the heat of the vehicle to not be dissipated outwards. And it actually prevents also heat from getting into the vehicle when being it too hot. No one likes a hot crew, guys. I know I was fucking hating it in Afghanistan being cooked to death. Um, and that kind of camouflage is really interesting because, again, the whole thermal imaging principle is being negated a little bit with trying to camouflage the vehicle, not visually, but visually via an electronic system, i.e. thermal imaging, which, again, is the number one thing you want to be utilizing, scanning and hunting for tanks in a battlefield. So then that probably brings you to question, well, Matsmus, why on earth are they not just putting these systems in place to camouflage these vehicles? Well, guys, it's pretty simple, and you probably already know the answer. It is because it costs a lot of money. Defense contractors love to have these kind of projects put in place because they're simple fixes, yet cost a lot of money. And let's be honest, we are in the defensive crunch market at the moment where really, if it isn't needed or necessary, they're not going to get it. And it's sad to say, but it's just the way it is. Tanks primarily don't need camouflage. The troops do. And it's normally the troops that get this kind of kit way before the armored fighting vehicles do. So it's back to the old school, as you can see with these vehicles, cammed up beautifully by using foliage and netting that is quite primitive but still does the job. Now, I have no real qualms with old school camouflage. I honestly think it makes a hell of a lot of sense in having a big angular blocked, you know, steel looking shape that's nothing actually natural in the real world and it's easily identifiable on the battlefield. To be able to break it up simply with just some foliage makes a lot of sense to me and it is just really cool to see us going back to that kind of style of tactics. It's interesting. So, just a little bit of an information session here from one of the American soldiers on the ground who's actually training in Poland. He's actually going to give you a little bit of a, uh, I guess, tutorial of how they actually camouflaged up their Bradley. I thought it was really interesting, so I'm going to share it with you guys. So we've got this as a perfect example right here. We're using this large chunk of tree. It's not actually necessarily covering the Bradley, but it's breaking this line and leading a way to, to uh, dissipate that signature of the, the vehicle. We've got uh, brush along the side. You can see we're using the natural terrain as well. So we're running this brush down once again just to change that signature. Instead of having a blocky vehicle coming up the top, you've got some, some lines to lead your eye away from the lines of the vehicle. You can see a little better here how we're using this natural foliage to uh, break up the line of that antenna and just to cover the, the color of the vehicle. and create a, less of a signature like you were looking at this vehicle. You can see my commander's sight up here is fully operational right now, as well as the gun, both the uh, 25 millimeter and my coax are both fully functional with a camouflage on it. So our initial steps in our camouflage process involved our camouflage net right here. This is a typical radar scattering and uh, laser scattering net. We just cover the vehicle as best we could, once again using chunks of it to break up the outline, create a visual difference in it. Once we had our camo nets on, we moved out here. We actually collected a lot of natural foliage. Nothing you see here was cut down. This is all deadfalls and uh, material that was already on the forest floor. So back in our, uh, our tactical Alpha Alpha, we started going ahead and applying a lot of the brush you see on the sides and on the turret, and then bringing some extra stuff that we had just kind of stacked on top for the movement out here. Once we got into place was when we really kind of finished the small details on it. So coming in, laying this brush down, coming off the sides, adding in, we actually added snow to mimic the natural environment. So we gathered snow from back behind our fighting position and actually added that in after we were in place here. And then our final step was just to move out away from the vehicle and kind of get an idea of what was popping out in the wood line. Uh, one of the things it's real easy to see is like our headlights have a very distinct round signature to them So we made sure we got those covered after we were in place just so they wouldn't stand out to the eye And there you go guys There's the key point of that entire demonstration there is to the eye and at the end of the day That is the mark one eyeball that is going to be on the battlefield all the time. Hopefully not injured um, Your systems fail. Okay batteries run out um, Obscurity can happen, you know, there's a lot of systems in place that are countering electronic systems now and The mark one eyeball is the first thing that needs to be tricked first And it is awesome to see that we are going back to old-school 
armored fighting vehicle camouflage and it just looks amazing and I miss it. I miss having fun, you know, getting old foliage and trying to make your tank better than the next guy's tank and, you know, showing off how good it is and etc, etc. And it's just cool. I think it's it kind of brings me back to kind of being a kid and, you know, playing in tree houses and shit, you know, camouflaging up a 62 ton tank. It's just so cool. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how NATO and uh, the following nations that are continuing on with this tactic are going to keep keep progressing with it. Maybe these newer systems will come into place. We'll start seeing some more footage of the Barracuda systems, the camouflage netting systems and all that good stuff coming in. Maybe we'll see that invisibility cloak sort of prototype coming into play too. I don't know. Definitely going to be an interesting feature if it does. Guys, let me know what you think about this entire sort of camouflage scenario. What do you think? Do you think that these new systems are worthwhile or do you think they're useless? And what do you think of the primitive old school you know, just using foliage uh, idea. Do you think it's really necessary or do you think it's a waste of time and it's just, they're going to be seen anyway? Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your opinions and comments. Anyway, guys, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe. I'd love it if you could leave a like and send me a comment anyway. Let me know how you're doing. All the best, guys. Take care and bye-bye.